have everywhere. As Manny Fresh would say, Ebbable well. We're live everywhere, A Clan. We're live on TikTok. Not nah, nothing. I thought that was my energy song. It was. C, what up? Sim Sim up. Val, good morning, good morning. <laughs> Garnett, Immortal Bloodline, good morning, good morning, good morning. We're live here today. We're live everywhere. Facebook, YouTube, X, TikTok, TikTok. Let me call the owls. Hold on, where my... I got to call the owls then. I got to call the owls then. I'll be right back. Good morning, good morning, good morning. There is Chris. Marquita. Casey Marie. Casey Marie, good morning. In about 20 minutes. Y'all, we got so much going on this morning. In about 20 minutes. Good morning, everybody, by the way. Good morning, Chris. He said good morning, Professor Soleil and Pastor Elite. <laughs> Hey, Clang, it's me. Good morning. Han Human, good morning. Donald Hoffman, good morning. Tawana T, I know it's you. What up? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. In about 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All smooth. Do they teach them how to do that in school? Or something? I think so. Good morning. <laughs> it's a beautiful day to be in God's house. A claim. A claim. <laughs> Tawana, what up? Chris says, Mr. Elite is always preaching those facts. Money Kelly. We called the owls and Money Kelly came flying in. Silent. I'm calling him Pastor Elite from now on. A claim. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be my you gonna be my uh deacon yeah you know the deacon the deacon gotta stand up when the pastor gets to talking get to preaching real good he gotta stand up behind us for some reason i don't know why but he gotta stand up that's your that's gonna be your role is that you yep chris says yes sir he there with you a claim <laughs> It's 7 a.m. 7 11, as they say. A claim. Right now. You really, you, you really acting like the pastor now. You you really. You said, you that what? Hey, you, your deacon is here ready to. Yeah. Is it time? My, oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. No, it's not okay. It's not. It's really not. 18 minutes, y'all. We're going to have on Mr. Lorenzo Lee Jackson, A claim. Will we, will we say the Bay Area's finest? Should I say that? Do we say that? That's what we say. We, we, we'll have the one and only on very shortly here, Becca. I got some stuff I want to talk about this morning, though, Mr. Lee. What? What? Uh, one of them intros. Thank you, Cook and Destroy. What up, fam? From San Francisco, California. <laughs> Thirty years in the game. You should do it, Mr. Lee. When Mr. Lorenzo comes on, I want you to bring him in just like that. I want you to do it like that. Yeah, like he's like like you one of the announcers at the game. Are you ready for that? We we got about you know, you know how, they, how they announce the boxers. Yeah. You know. Yeah. From San Francisco, California, by the way. 
<laughs> South Paul, stuff like you know, they um I'm reckoning a thirty year old <laughs> Scat Pack, Scat Pack, good morning. Scat <laughs> That's how we bring it. Oh man, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now I'm, I'm ready for him to come on now. I'm ready for him to come on now. We we got about we got about 17 more minutes before Mr. Lorenzo comes on. But as you can see, Mr. Elite is gonna bring him in. The right way. A claim. Miss J. Miss J. Good morning. <laughs> we acting a fool, Miss J. Cool, cool guy. Good morning. Trill, good morning. Car Mike. Car Car Mike, you be fixing them cars. Let's get ready to learn. No doubt, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Candy, Candy, good morning. Man, y'all are too funny. I had something serious to talk about and y'all got me laughing. Shabuka, Shabuka, what up? Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. We got so much to talk about this morning. Um, Is your audiobook a CD or on Audible? Miss J, it's on my website, 100kadjuster.com. It's there, it's a direct download. You go purchase the audio book right from there, and it will give you a link to go download your audio book. There you go. A claim. Ashe, Ashe, walking in favor, Sharon. Ooh, these some good names today. Here comes the book. What up, though? Thank you for the likes, y'all. We got about 15 minutes now. Any updates on the fraud case? Let me let you know, uh, Chris. So about that, that claim I was working yesterday. So remember, if, if y'all were here, who was all here yesterday? Put an owl in the chat if you were here yesterday. I was talking about this new claim that I'm working. I'm working in sort of a SIU capacity in this new department. I'm really new to this. Um, but hey, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? A claim is a claim is a claim is a claim. So there, there are different fraud indicators, and some of those fraud indicators were heightened on this claim, so I'm working it. But Ali, Ali has been been twitching and turning about this claim specifically, right? Um, I so we had what did I say their names were? Jennifer was here for yesterday. I tried to I tried to conceal their names. We had uh John and Jane, because I couldn't really think of no name. John and Jane. Dope, right? Crypto Cali, what up? Moni Dev, good morning. So what happened is that there was a rental vehicle that was rented, right? You have the the claimant, Joe and something else, right? J J uh, Jane and uh, John and Jane Doe, right? John rents the vehicle. Jane is entered as a driver on the vehicle. They get the highest maximum on the insurance coverage. 12 hours later, they're in a hit and run accident, so they say but there's information of tracking in the vehicle that does not coincide with what they said immediately. Some other fraud indicators were raised. The claim was put in my court as a potential for fraud. BLK Trucker, what up? So I came on and I spoke with everybody about it as I was doing my preliminary claim review, was looking over things, trying to get my ducks in a row, trying to figure out what questions I had how I was going to approach the claim, and I kind of walked everybody with me as I was doing it, a claim yesterday. John's about to be Bubba. Oh, no, about to be Bubba, new friend. Uh-uh, John. <laughs> so <clears throat> as we ended yesterday, I told y'all that I was going to call the insurer or the claimants yesterday. I'm so used to saying the insurers. These are claimants. I was going to call the claimants yesterday, um, and I tried to call them. I spoke very uh, briefly to John. I thought we called him Joe. Anyway, we're going to call him John today. His name is now John, a la Chris. Um, <laughs> I, I called John yesterday, and John, y'all, thank you for the likes. Thank you for the likes. What up, Nina? Nina, good morning. Car Mike, good morning. Vita Blue, good morning. Donnell, Wanique, good morning. Katie, what up? So um, 
I tried to call the claimant yesterday. I spoke to him briefly. He said that he had just been released from the hospital, that he ended up being admitted to the hospital, and that he would be sending over his medical bills, and that he could not talk, and that he would call me another time to speak. So before he got off the phone, I told him that, that actually, instead of calling me at another time, let's schedule a time. He told me to email him, and we would set up a scheduled time. I tried to inquire about talking to his wife. He said that his wife had also been admitted to the hospital and she was still in the hospital, hopefully to be released sometime today. So I have not been able to make any headway further on the claim. I have, I still have not received a police report yet. <clears throat> you know, I feel it, Katie, that's what it's seeming like. That's what it's seeming like. That's what it's seeming like. Um, but I haven't I haven't got the police report yet. I don't have any further details. So I'm just now waiting to speak to the insured. Um, the adjuster will be going out to look at the car sometime this week, probably if not today, tomorrow sometime. So I'll get some more information on the vehicle. Um, that's really it right now for that claim. For that claim, that's all that's what's going on. Um, uh, thanks for asking about it because it's I'm taking y'all with me. I ain't forgot about it. I'm telling y'all about it. A claim, a claim, Nina, good, mor good morning. So this morning, and we got like 10 minutes before Mr. Lorenzo comes on and joins us this morning. But there was something I saw this morning that I wanted to talk to y'all about. What up, Juan? Juan, Antonio, what up? <clears throat> so y'all know me, right? I, I, I be in the, I be, I be looking around the Facebook groups. Why I do it, I don't know. I think I'm trying to save somebody. <laughs> I think, I think, I think I feel like I'm some type of a lifeguard. Like I'm trying to save the drowning. Like almost like a nurse. You know, like when nurses go on vacation and somebody is sick, they still jump out and help them because they signed this oath. You know, something like that. So when I'm in these Facebook groups, right? I see so many people who right now are talking about quitting, quitting adjusting. Bless my heart, right, Miss? <laughs> Ain't no trophies or awards for this kind of work. It's just <laughs> good morning. Yvonne Gray, good morning. Wow. Good morning. So I'm in the I'm in the Facebook group. I'm looking around, and it's a few people that are like, hey. I got my license last year. I haven't found anything from it. I'm getting discouraged. I want to give up. I'm getting discouraged. I want to give up. So to an adjuster that is also trying to get those same positions that they're trying to get, this is music to your ears, usually. This is music to your ears. Because you know that they don't have that. They're not an owl. Who? They're not an owl. But more importantly than that, um, I don't I don't really think of other adjusters necessarily as competition because I feel like this job is too hard and it's too competitive and it's too gatekeeped. Most of these people on these Facebook groups that are talking about they're ready to give up, can I tell y'all the real about it? Can I tell y'all like the real honest truth? When I start asking them questions and they say, I've been trying, I've been trying, I don't think they've even begun to try. Because this is what happens. They not an entrepreneur. It's not. I know it, KD. I know it's not. It's really not for the week. And that's really a challenge I had and even trying to think about telling people about it. I, I really struggled with it. I wasn't going to say anything because I don't think some people really can't can't do it necessarily. They can't go through the ups and downs. Um, they don't have the mental fortitude. They They're not as mentally strong to go through it. They don't have the discipline to go through it. And, and then, to be honest with you, a lot of people just, um, they don't have self-belief, period. So when you don't believe in yourself, it's hard to follow anything through. Lisa Lee, good morning. What I mean by that is, so I'm in the Facebook groups, right? And I'm reading a poll. And I'm just going to kind of paraphrase what happens on this post. The person says, 
I've been an adjuster. Uh, I got my license last year. I haven't been able to find any jobs. I'm discouraged. I'm ready to give up. I feel like this is not, this isn't what I thought it was. And I think what we have to think about is that when you're doing something new, when you're doing something brand new, it feels harder than what it may actually be because it's just new to you. But when you're doing something new that you really don't have any awareness about, like real awareness, you could be so-called trying and not really hit anything. I really don't call it trying if you're trying to be an independent adjuster and you only got one license. You haven't really even you haven't even opened the door yet to the gym. Like you're not even in the gym yet. You're you're still outside in the parking lot. I don't call it trying if you don't have any certifications. I don't call it trying if you're not on any rosters. I don't call it trying if you haven't been to any training. What you're really doing is you're playing. Can I be real? Should I call it playing? I'm going to call it playing. What you're really doing is playing as an adjuster. You're cosplaying as an adjuster. You got a license, but you don't really have what it, what what a firm would really look at if they were really trying to hire someone, if they had positions right now, which adjusters get deployed every day, even through slow seasons, I'm telling you, there's always a claim. There's always adjusters working. If you haven't done those things, can we really say that you've tried? Ms. J, what kind of certification? So great question. There's two different types of certifications. Well, there may be multiple, but here's my category. There are skill certifications, like Xactimate, like a Hague certification. Then there are carrier certifications. Carrier certifications like Big Red, like USAA, like MetLife. You cannot work a claim for a carrier if you're not certified with them. So let's look at the numbers real quick. We got like five minutes before Mr. Lorenzo comes in here. Let's look at the statistics. Let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the logic behind this. If you're a new adjuster, right? If you're an adjuster and you're just getting into this industry, Hague is spelled H-A-A-G, H-A-A-G, Hague certification. I talk about them in my book, Adjust Your Way to 100K, because I tell you in the book that you're, you're not really going to get anywhere if you're not certified in anything. You got one license. So, okay, let's say you got a Texas license, but there's a hurricane that comes to Florida and the firms start hiring adjusters to work those hurricane claims in Florida. If all you have is a Texas license, you don't have any certifications, you have no training, why would I hire you? Why would I put you on this assignment? And if you only got a Texas license, I can't hire you for Florida claims. You're not even licensed to work those claims. So really, when I look at a lot of things that people are doing, when people are like, oh, I've been doing this for so long, I've done everything, you really haven't done anything. That's what I'm finding out. People really haven't even gotten started yet. They haven't even gotten into the gym yet. They're still out on the playground. They just got one license and expect to make 100K. It's a fallacy. You don't even have what it takes to be acceptable. So we got three minutes before Mr. Lorenzo comes on, and I know he has some things to talk to us about this morning. Mr. Elite, Yvonne, Yvonne, good morning. Mr. Elite, yes. I need I need your help, sir. I need your help. Yes. We have Mr. Lorenzo coming on with us yes. in a couple of minutes. I need you to bring them in, a client. Okay. Is Maryland a popular state to be certified in? So there's, let me let me clear this up real quick, Ms. J. Uh, there's two things. There's a certification and then there's a license. There is no Maryland certification because Maryland is not a, a carrier and Maryland is not uh, a skill. Maryland is a state, so that would be a license. And Maryland is a non-licensed state. That means that if you are a licensed adjuster, you can practice in claims handling in Maryland because you already have a license. That state doesn't have a license. They basically kind of like a free state is what we call it. 
We'll talk more about that, but no, Maryland doesn't have a certification, nor do they have a license. They are a non-licensed state. Mr. Lorenzo's here, Mr. Elite, bring them in, please. How would you do it? Well, how do we bring in such an illustrious guest? Bro, so I'm eating stuff here. Like <laughs> Becca, what up? I'm San Francisco, California. You can't hear? Hold on, Mr. Lorenzo can't hear me. You're not supposed to hear me, Mr. Lorenzo. You in the waiting room. Bring him in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> From San Francisco, California, by Dallas, Texas. Can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. Oh, I can hear you. I'm in first adjuster now. You can hear? 30 years in the game. Let me see what I need to do because I can't hear you at all. What do you Jackson. Well, it is, it's, everybody else heard it, A-Claim. Mr. Lorenzo's here with us, but he's he's trying to get his audio working. He's he gonna have I, to do it again because he's I gonna wish he hear. heard that. Mr. Lorenzo can't hear us. I don't know why. We're gonna take we, he's gonna get it together in a second. Tawana, good morning. Libra girl, good morning. That was a good one, Mr. Lee. You're gonna have to do it again though when he gets it together. He might have to come back on. Yeah, might have to leave and come back on. AK, he's here. He's here. I'm I'm typing to him. Can you hear me now? No. No. Technical difficulty. Yeah. Okay. 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 Got. It. Can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me now? Okay, so let's start over, Mr. Lorenzo, because we're live. Mr. Elite just brought you in with, like, I, I can't even describe it. Let me let you hear it. Again, Mr. Elite, one more Go time. For it. <laughs> From San Francisco, California, by way of Dallas, Texas. <laughs> the owner of insurance to Justin now. <laughs> 30 years of experience. Yes, sir. The master teacher. Uh huh. Lorenzo, Monday, Captain. Good morning, sir. They Good say morning. it's always better the second time around, Miss Dealey. We appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Good morning, Money Bag. How you doing today, sir? Uh, it's early. Just got up. Just woke up. Oh man. <laughs> just, just, just popped out of bed and 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 turned on my computer. We appreciate you being here with us. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know you just got out the bed. What's what's on your mind this morning? Um, well, I'm about to get on the road soon, heading over to uh Kansas City, Missouri. Uh okay. to hang out with some of our network net network members. And a couple old students out there doing claims, uh, doing auto claims. So I'm going to go spend a couple of days out there and hang out with them for a while, see what they're doing. Hopefully get some good video and all that good stuff. And nice getaway, though. I just really need to drive more than anything else. Yeah, yeah. You got to clear clear the adjuster mind, huh? Yeah, I get it. Sure. I get it. Yep. I get it. So I was talking to everybody about, and we're live everywhere, by the way. We're on Facebook. YouTube, X, Instagram, TikTok, by the way. Hit the likes. We've got Mr. Lorenzo here. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat. But, um, you know, Mr. Lorenzo, sometimes in the mornings I go look on Facebook groups and I I call myself like an adjuster lifeguard. Okay. I be trying to save people. You know, I throw okay. out some life preservers, some rafts, you know. Okay. Um, but sometimes like that that uh, that bridge in, in Maryland, sometimes – it comes crumbling down. Yes. I, I think I think what it is, what I see is a lot of people say, hey, I've been trying, mm -hmm. but I haven't been successful. Right. And when I start asking them questions, I realize they haven't even really gotten started yet, to be honest. Right. Yes. Um, so that's what we were chatting about before you came on. And I, I know you've got some thoughts this morning before you go talk to these network members on their deployment. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I've been getting the same messages. Uh, I just had one yesterday I was going over and um, it's the same same conversations that we keep having with a lot of the students and, and people that want to get into this suggesting world. And it, I, I, I think I, I need to have something just recorded where I can push play. Uh, because it's a, it's almost the same kind of conversations and the the big part of it is what it really boils down to is that they are not investing in themselves every everyone wants to do this everybody hears about the money um everybody wants to start now and I had this conversation with this gentleman yesterday and I asked him, you know, let me know what you've done so far. Now, mind you, this particular person wasn't even a student of mine. Uh, this was mm. a person that was just referred. Uh, one of my students referred him to talk to me. And and so I, I'm like, well, what have you done? And he said, well, I got my Texas license. I said, OK, uh, who would you get your Texas license with? He's like, I don't even know. I don't remember. OK. All right. And what have you done after your Texas license? Uh, well, nothing yet. And so it was just that roadmap basically to tell him what he needed to do. And I said that, you know, you need to train. You need training. You know, you need the, the same thing we say all the time. You need exact mates, You need your boot camp. You need just just, you know, we go through the whole thing with them. Mm -hmm. uh, but not only that, you also need to have patience, too. And that's the hardest part is, is the patience. It's not only investing in yourself, it's then having the patience to know that if you've done all the things that you're supposed to do, then it will happen for you. Yeah. And, and, it, and it goes back to that's the, that's the recording. I can record that and I can just push play and say the same things. And most people don't know this part. Um, even about what I'm doing for, for the business is it's the sacrifice. It's the investing in yourself. It's the sacrifice to know that you're on the right path. You're doing all that you can do in order to make whatever it is possible for you. And mm -hmm. it's the same thing what we're doing in our business. You yourself have sacrificed a lot in order to come and to, to create something that's super huge, that's going to generate a lot of work and help for people in education. I, too, am sacrificing a lot. And when it is uncomfortable, and I've told you this before, when it's really uncomfortable, then I know I'm on the right track. The problem is these people don't want to be uncomfortable yet. And, and they want the quick. They want the quick and the easy. And I, I get it. You know, we come from that microwave society. It's like you want, you know, I took this class and I want to make $10,000 in a month. Yeah. OK. OK. I, I hear you. I, I understand it. But where's the sacrifice? How do you build that muscle? Where, you know, when you work out, you're really sore and then eventually that muscle starts to pop up and then you're like, OK, this is what it's worth. Yeah. And, and I, too, am going through the same struggles as, as everybody else, just in sort of a different way. But we are creating something that is going to be super huge and, and it's it hurts. It's it's painful. Yeah. Um, I'm up at I'm up at night. And that's what I say to them. If this is what you really want to do, you invest in yourself. You have the patience, you put the work in, and it all kind of come together. I'm I'm glad I didn't give up <clears throat> because um yeah. it was definitely it was definitely uh uncomfortable for me my uh first year trying to get into the industry after getting licensed. I put a suitcase in the hallway. I expected to get deployed. It's Hurricane Harvey, but I did not know what I didn't know, frankly. Yeah. And yeah. um now looking back on it, it's just um, it, it's it's anxiety. It comes with a lot of growth, and and yeah, mm -hmm. it comes with understanding patience. And I think now, even post twenty twenty, we should all have a different level of understanding with patience mm -hmm. than we did before twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll say this: nobody's gonna come and console you when these hurricanes start coming, and you realize you didn't do what it was needed. And now you still can't grasp the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what kept me motivated. I'm not sure what motivates others, but um, yeah, you're right. It's just going to be uncomfortable. It will. Yeah. And it will. And, and 
you know, like I said, it, you know, and we repeat this over and over and over and over again, is that you have to put that work in and all of the things that we suggest, but ends up happening. And this is every year for me. This is every year within the company. Um, when all of a sudden we start getting these hurricanes, getting these weather events, things that are happening, all of a sudden people want to then start to sign up all these classes. And, and that's, fine. that's great financially. We'll take that all day long. But I always have to tell them, it's like, hey, this is the stuff that you should have been doing in January in order to get you prepared for what's getting ready to happen. And, and that, is the, that is the flow of how it works here. And all the people that we had in January are all the ones that are currently working now. I mean, we got people that are deployed now in Missouri that's working, but they put that work in early. And yeah. the, the earlier, the better. Now, I'm not saying that you won't have the opportunity. I mean, you may have the opportunity, but then but that comes with the problem of having an opportunity and not being prepared. That's a whole nother topic that we can have yeah. is because yeah. if you're not prepared, then you're going to go into a situation you're not going to do so well. And then your name is going to be out there that you didn't do so well. And so, you know, like I said, it, there, there's a whole thing that we go through starting in December. We start talking about, OK, start working on these things right now. So when the time comes, you're ready. Yeah. And it, like you said, you got to be self-motivated and. You got to really want this badly. And if you don't want it bad enough, then maybe this is just not for you. I hate to say it like that, but it might not be. It it, it, it might not be. It might not be. Um, mm -hmm. You, you got to be a different person. But, you know, I, I guess the people jumping in um, when the when the storms start, I guess because mm -hmm. it's more real, you can see it. It's more yeah. in your brain. But I it's almost it. like, have you ever been... Um, God forbid. I hope I hope you're gonna say no to this. But have you ever had like a home? <laughs> have you ever had a home break in or anything like that? Uh, no, I no? have not. I have not. Oh, uh, I I guess I guess you could say I can't. Yeah, I've definitely. Yeah, our house has been broken into before. Okay. I've had that. And so usually, um, what most people want to do after they have a break in is they want to go get an alarm system. Right. True. Well. It's definitely going to protect you for next time if you right. turn it on, right? right. Um, but now is the wrong time to say, I need to run out and get it. You should have did that months ago mm -hmm. to protect from this situation. So it's kind of that same mindset and methodology. Um, but those who can stay the course, they're going to be very successful. Um, but patience, yeah. Patience. And I think, too, is a lot of people don't know what the course is. And, and that's and that's part of our educating us talking about it, you know, over and over and over again, because truly they just don't know. Yeah. Um, and and that's ed, going. And that's the education behind it. That's what we're doing here live in the morning. We're having yeah. these type of conversations and people do need to hear over and over what the course is. And um, once we and I do it in my class is once they're done with the license class, then I go on and talk about things that need to be done, you know, and I do say focus on your license. Let's get that done first, step by step, because if I give you too much, it'll be overwhelming for you. And, yeah. you know, it's kind of throwing back your book, going back to your book is that what, you know, it gives you that roadmap and people have to take advantage of that if they truly want to be successful at this. These are all of us have been through it. We are all different stages of it for sure, but we've all gone through the process. And who better to learn from? You know, I'll tell people, listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. I've been through this already. What's going on right now? When the weather events are slow, I've yes. been there. When it's, when it's bumping, a hurricane is hitting every two weeks. I have been there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, and, and, and you need to start, and people need to take advantage of what the information and the knowledge that we do have. And like I said, it's really cool because we're all at different stages of it for sure. But we yeah. all have our own stories. We're all able to help people kind of get through. And that's why um, uh, I, that's why I like our network that we do have, because it gives people opportunities to go in and ask those questions and pick our heads. You know, I have people that are calling me personally in our network that just want to talk one on one type of thing, just some of the things that they're going through. And and that is important. you got to have that support group. I, was, I, I can't say that more than enough. You have to have a support group. And that's what we're providing. And that's what the school is all about. 
what what was your support like um when you first started like you know you said katrina was your you had already been an adjuster but right. this is your first time as an independent so how old were you then when you first started Could, as, or, or, as an adjuster or as an independent independent uh, 2005 and it's 24 to 19 years ago. A minus, I, I don't know, 30, I don't know, 35. That's off the top of my head, give or take. Oh man, 35 year olds, though. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, who was who was your support on that first storm? Um, I, I, I can say my situation was a little different because once again, I had already been an adjuster for a while. And so my transition was easy. It, it wasn't a work transition because I knew how to do the job. It was, I was an independent for State Farm who I started off with. So the system I knew, you know, all that stuff I had together. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to become an entrepreneur then. It's a little different. Um, I was yeah. I was a check every, check every two weeks, company car benefits due before Katrina. And so my transition was more financial. Um, I had to figure out how to manage all of the money that I was making. And that's when I went buck wild. And I always tell my story, bought diamond earrings for my daughters and bought a Lexus and bought a Suburban, just going to balling out. So yeah. my transition was financial. Uh, and so once I figured that part out, um, the, the the claims part was the is easy for me because I already have been doing it. So yeah, uh, it, it is it's hard for me to give that story to people because I'm not I didn't necessarily go through the struggle of just becoming an independent and just learning the game. But here you go, because I've gone through that process as an independent and a staff adjuster, that's the knowledge and that's the information I can bring and help people kind of guide them along the way, along with the money, too, because uh, you need that help uh, yeah. with somebody would have been able to help me. Um, at that time financially, because I just didn't know. Um, but the transition for us work was easy. So my story is just a little different for people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel you. My support was whoever I met. Um, <laughs> right. Trying to, trying to ingratiate myself into relationships with people. And um, it's not the easiest thing on deployments to try right. to make friends, because a lot of people, it's it's a... It's competitive and it's competitive yeah. in a different way. And I try to explain it to people and, and I definitely explain it in the book, but it's um it's doggy -e dog sometimes. And yeah. there are some people that don't necessarily want to make friends. I've I worked in office um in my first few deployments and trying to talk to people, they don't even want to talk to you, they don't want to say hi in the morning, right. especially if you're not on because you may be on a state farm floor and there might be five different companies. You got Pilot over there in the corner. You got Renfro yeah. over here. You got Everals over there. And you might just walking in in the morning saying hi to people and they don't even respond. True. So what I did is um, I just made friends with the people around me. I, I helped them out, hoping they could help me out. And some of them did, some of them didn't. But some of those that did, I'm still friends with them to this day. Mm -hmm. And I get my deployments and my help from those, some of my deployments from those people. Mm -hmm. um, so the network is very important. I just didn't understand how important in the beginning, because when you have a proper network, uh, they're going to course correct you. Right. They'll let you know if you if you open your mouth and say something, they'll let you know, hey, that's not going to work, or hey, there's work over here. Um, but yeah, a lot of people don't have that. No, but it's, it's a skill also is um, you have to be able to here goes the hustle. But see, going back to the, the hustle in you is built is you're built that way. And yeah. so you're going to get the information by any means necessary in order to get that job, to keep getting that money. OK. And, yeah. and so people that have that in them and that's something that you have to acquire. Or I'm, I'm not sure how to tell people how to get that. I, I haven't figured that part out yet. Um, but when you are out there working and you're creating, you know, that network, as you talk about, and you and you're you're looking for people that appear to have some kind of information that you might need, um, you have to figure out the best way to get that information from them, because if you don't, you're going to fail. And that means that you're going to be released, meaning that they're going to let you go home. They're going to ask you to go home and you're not going to get that money. And so yeah. it is. And I tell the story and some of 
some people may have already heard the story, but I tell the story when I was in Nebraska, in Nebraska somewhere working and it was a young man from Florida and it was his first assignment, first, first deployment. And he saw me, we stayed in the same hotel and he simply came to ask me, can I help him? And I was like, well, cool, but that means that you're going to have to ride along with me for a week before I can you know, show you how to do what we do. And he's like, well, I'll sacrifice that week. That means I'm not going to do any of my claims. All I'm going to do is help you with your claims and help you with your paperwork. And I'm going to be behind. But trust me, I'm going to get the information. And once I get the information, I'm going to run with it. I, that to me is the hustle. That's where it was at, because he wasn't making any money for a whole week. He didn't close any claims for a whole week. And any of us that are out there working assignments, we know what that looks like when you ain't closing claims for a week. Um, yeah. But that's, he sacrificed that. Right. And so yeah. even if he got released after a week, even if he did, he had a chance to spend a week with me doing everything that I do. And he took that as a, that was, that was his sacrifice. And he has something in him that a lot of people don't have. And it's hard for you and I to teach that. <laughs> uh, you just have to have that and want it bad enough and whatever that means for you. And it works a lot of different, different ways for a lot of different people. Uh, but you cannot you cannot sit in the corner and be by yourself. That I know for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, mm. well, there's some people that like uh, comment on my videos, Mr. Owens. I get a lot of comments. And mm -hmm. what a lot of adjusters like to do that are still working in the industry, they like to comment mm -hmm. and, and discourage people and say, hey, but remember, y'all, it's not easy. You got to do this. You got to do that. And I always say, you know, being evicted is hard. Okay. Telling your kids that they can't have what they need, not being able to provide for them is hard. Mm -hmm. um, living in this economy, inflation is what, 22%, something like that? That's hard. It's All of those things are harder than acquiring the necessary skills to be an adjuster. So I never said it was easy. And I've always... I've always battled with myself about telling people about adjusting because I know it's difficult. I know it's not for everybody, right. but I know that there's a lot of people, if they had the awareness of it, that work just as hard, if not harder in another industry could translate those skills into our industry and make a lot of money doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so from your vantage point, why is all the negativity circulating throughout these groups online? Uh, uh, it could be, it's a lot of reasons why, but this, this is, I, I will give you this, uh, with that question. Some of it is, I agree, is that they just don't want anybody else in the industry. It's like, I want to get this money. I don't want to flood the industry with a whole bunch of justice. That makes me, then I won't have all the opportunities. Okay. That's, that's one side of it. Uh, which means that they don't have enough confidence in their own ability because they think they're going to lose their job to somebody else. But that's another, that's an ego issue or whatever that is. Um, yeah. The other, the other part of that is too, is, and, and I'm guilty of this and I just did it two nights ago. Uh, I got a message from me and someone said they wanted to uh, start training. They wanted to open up a school and they mm. want to do what I did. And I do this on purpose just to see. And this is a good example of it. I said that I don't think that you can do it. It's really, really difficult to do. And mm -hmm. that person came back to me and said, OK. And I, then I, I text back and I said, was it that easy? <laughs> was, was it really that easy for me just to say that? And so I'll say that to people a lot of time that it's really hard. I don't think you can do it. I wouldn't even try it. And just to kind of see what their response is, because that means they really didn't want it. If I'm able to talk them out of it that quickly, you really don't want it. And so when I see that on the Facebook groups, you know, I do read it in two ways. Yeah, they're being negative and they don't want anybody in the industry. But then I always say, well, I wonder if that's said just to see how badly they want it. And a lot of people will fall for, OK, maybe I can't do it. Then you know what? I don't think you built for it anyway. At that point, then mm. yeah, maybe you do think you not get in the business. Um, mm. So okay, but, yeah. So I, okay. I look at not always as a negative. I look at it as a positive because I'm checking the temperature of somebody. I'm trying to see where you at with this, and and you know I do get calls for people wanting to create schools and and do this, and and I'm pretty open with a lot of the information because I know a lot of people ain't gonna do it anyway. 
No different yeah. than one in my class when I give people ideas about streams of income. I tell you all day long because I know ain't nobody going to do it. Uh, they're going to let Monday come. And if y'all don't know what that is, we need to get back to our, uh, <laughs> our, our live that we used to do. But yeah, most, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but most, people will, most people will allow others to talk them out of it. And I had, a, I had quite a few um, instances where people um, almost talked me out of doing what I'm doing now as far as creating a school and it's a training and all this other stuff. Um, but if you're, if you're not built to take that challenge, then anybody can say anything to you and, and it'll shake you. Yeah. As, as Darius Cook was saying, he's here with us this morning. Good morning, Cook. Uh, as Darius would say, getting tricked off the street, because that, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's what that is. Yeah, that's what um, it is. Yeah, you, you said checking temperatures, though. That's, that's um, that's, I, I get that. I get that a lot. Um, when you, when you talk to somebody that says, um, in one, in one of your classes that says, hey, uh, I want to make the money that you made. I want to be, um, a, a educator in this. Do you tell them about all of the, like, you told us about how you drove to Chicago to teach a class and it was maybe three people and, and ended up with two one. Of them backed, yeah. Uh -huh. Two of them backed out on your way there. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. How do you even explain the mental fortitude that it takes to do that and to bounce back from that? Ah, that's a good one. Um, because the difference with me and a lot of people out there uh, is I know what my calling is. Um, and so I've always known no matter how hard it it gets or it has been, whatever it may be, that I am following what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and that's important to know. And if, if you don't have that in you or believe that, then it's easy to um, not go through with something. Uh, even though I knew, you know, like I said, when I got to Chicago, I, you know, I, I, I had one person and I knew that if I went through with it because I committed to it. And so I'm going to go through with it. But I knew yeah. that if I went through these hurdles, uh, these struggles, that my muscles would end up getting bigger and things would start to work out. And, and, and they have. And, and each stage, I mean, each stage of my journey, whether it's adjusting or after adjusting and creating the business, I've always had these hurdles and these struggles. I mean, that's life, you know, and yeah. and you have to believe that whatever it is, your 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 path, you know, it sometimes is healy, sometimes it's it's curvy, it's it ain't it ain't been straight, you know. I don't have a straight line story, a road story for you. Yeah. Um, but I always knew what I'm supposed to be doing. So I, I'm just following. I'm following my path. I'm following my calling. I'm following the things that I know that I was built to do. I knew that I didn't want to work for anybody. Uh, I always known that. And as my daughter Lauren and always says that, you know, we don't play well with others. I've always known that part of it. Yeah. Um, and I knew that I had to do certain things if I wanted to create something for look, my daughter to now do. You know, my daughter is doing it. And now my son is out there adjusting. Shout out to Pina. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Shout out to Pina. He's making money now. But yeah. um, all this is because I knew that I was supposed to be doing these things. And so here we go. Everything starts to follow that. And There's the, <laughs> <more on> the <laughs> balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And so it's, I don't know. So, like, that's, we always go through this. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to, give this to people all we can do is tell our stories and that's what we do and we know that it's possible that's I, it. you know it, it's it's hard to tell people about it um i just uh you just have it in you you're right um remember so many instances of myself just being um upset about things that go on at jobs um mm -hmm. I, I, in high school i worked at the St. Louis uh, International Airport, right, at this mm -hmm. uh, restaurant. Mm -hmm. And at the time, this is like after 9-11, um, TWA, I believe, had, this is a while back, right? I'm saying TWA. TWA, TWA I know. Had, right. had pulled mm -hmm. out, 
-hmm. of the airport and um there wasn't as much there weren't as many flights and so they were closing down the restaurant i worked at and mm -hmm. so we were cleaning things up and the manager almost like your pizza story with pilot Mm -hmm. He came in and he was like, hey, y'all want y'all want to take these old ass sandwiches that were in the refrigerator <laughs> have been there. Y'all want to take these sandwiches? Mm -hmm. I feel like he might as well just spit in my face. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want them five day old sandwiches that we're, we're going to throw away. But mm -hmm. there's some people that flock to it. They they have mm -hmm. bundles of sandwiches walking mm -hmm. out of there. Mm -hmm. I felt disrespected. Mm -hmm. And I still think about that feeling like. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about the pilot story, it's just, it just, the those the people that walked away with those sandwiches and felt blessed for it. There's some people like myself that felt slighted and you get a chip on your shoulder for it. And um, I can't stop until I can knock that chip off. Right. I ain't ate pasta house not one time since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. The hell with the pasta house. But yeah, it's it's just this this thing. And I cannot explain it to anybody. No. I, I can't put you in my shoes. It'd be a lot of instances that I would have to give you. And then you still might not take the same away thing away with it. No. So I feel you 100 percent. Yeah. I, I know. Think, yeah. Uh, go ahead. No, I'm just saying that. And you have to hold. And it's healthy to hold on to that feeling um, because it's that has, same thing has motivated me to keep going is that chip and i keep that chip I, I need that chip because i never want to go back to that same feeling again so i remember that feeling and and that's what you talk about and it's okay it's okay i'm glad you say it's okay because it don't feel okay to me <laughs> it's okay <laughs> I'm up at 4 a.m thinking about you know um it seems kind of unrelenting sometimes so mm -hmm. i appreciate you saying it's okay because okay. um, it don't feel like it's okay, <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's yeah. a, and, and it's a test. It's a testimony too. It's a good story because because sometimes people need to hear that they they may have their own similar story. And and I go back to is that you have to always let people know that there is a way. You know whatever it might be. You know adjusting adjusting is is our way. That's what we have found, and we know it works. And no people, and people have to know that it's not okay to sit in the struggle. You know, you can't sit in the struggle. You can remember the struggle, but you can't sit in it. That's the that's yeah. the difference. And a lot of yeah. people sit in that struggle. It, it it takes a lot of courage to come out of it. Um, mm -hmm. and you're gonna be uncomfortable for a while. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you imparting this wisdom on everybody this morning, Mr. Lorenzo. Um, I know you're gonna be jumping on the road soon. Do you have any parting words for everybody? Any words of wisdom? I know you got a lot. Pick out one for us. Just pick out one. Well, I, I had something this morning, I, and I texted you earlier, and yeah. um, I, I did have something, and, and I had to retract that for now because I, I don't think I'm ready to deliver it just yet. Um, it's something that I'm working on because uh, I think, people need we, we talk about the roadmap and we and we say a lot of people just don't know and i'm i'm trying to create something that will help people not make it easier for them but them to understand exactly the steps that they need to take in order to get to the place where we are and yeah. ultimately what it boils down i haven't i haven't fully developed it yet. So it was pre, it was immature, I, I'm premature, premature because okay. I'm not ready, I'm not, not ready to give the message just yet, but I will. Uh, yeah. But when you but do I get it, I can't wait, yeah. Yeah, it, it's coming. And when I'm driving nine hours to Missouri, I'll have it at the, at the end of that nine hours for sure. Yeah. Um, so, I, so I do, I'm looking forward to coming back to talk about it. But parting words for people, yeah. real simple, uh, that time has come, it, it is here. It is time for you to make the change. Uh, we say it in January of, you know, when the new year comes, we talked about it like, OK, this is the time for you to make the change. It, it, it's the time to make the change. And yeah. you have to do whatever, whatever you need to do in order to make it happen. That that's defined a lot of different ways for a lot of different people. So I can't give you that definition. But all I want to let you guys know is everybody out there that it is very possible. You can change your whole, you can change your life for sure. Um, but you have yes. to build that muscle. So you got to go through the pain. So allow us to help you go through the pain. Uh, I'm not going to hold your hand through the pain, but I, I will I will help you the best way that I can because it is something that you have to go through yourself. So 
not that fancy to this morning, you know, so early I ain't got a chance to formulate uh, <laughs> some basic shit this morning. But <laughs> but I have some I have something deeper later. <laughs> so, so, you know what? Basic is sometimes all that's needed. I felt a little teary eyed. I started thinking about the thing. I was like, ooh, I don't want to feel that again. So now nah, it hit me, Mr. Lorenzo. That's enough. That's that's enough. Ooh, Chris okay. says Mr. Lorenzo thinks we don't have on steel toe boots. It's all right. <laughs> we'll get it next time. <laughs> well, I I appreciate you being on this morning, sir. And um, no, safe no, travels. No questions the out there. I'm surprised. No questions from anybody. Uh, let's see. Let me check questions Anything real quick. I can let me touch check. On while, we're, while I'm here. Chris says, if it wasn't easy, uh, it wouldn't pay as well. No doubt. Not really any questions. More comments. I think I think we got a lot of owls on this morning, so everybody understands. You know. Um, Okay. What we're saying is just um, when you're going through hell, I'll equate it to that because um, that's how I felt that year that I was trying to become or get get on a position. Right. When you're going through hell, it's not a lot of people that can speak to you, you know, mm -hmm. and and when when you do get somebody that understands what you're saying um, and, and they're really talking to you and they're giving you the real not maybe what you want to hear but they're telling you the real of what it is uh sometimes it's not much to say so that's the way i take it we, we don't have a lot of questions this morning um mm -hmm. i think everybody understands it's just time to get to work okay yeah yeah all right very good hey very good. safe travels back to the show me state all right uh all right. please please let us know about your journey take take some content and uh tell the network members we said hello We'll do. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I will, I'll see you guys later. I will holla at you later on today. Yep. We'll see you next week on Thursday's our day now, right? Yes. Yeah. Thursday's Thursday. our day. Thursday's our day. All right. See you next Thursday at 730 a.m. Central Standard. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Yes, sir. See you later. Y'all, that was none other than Money Bag Zoe A. Plain. You said, you know, the, the money, the, the money, sometimes it's a straight Straight message. Get to work. <laughs> Mr. Lorenzo said something about the pain. I was like, damn, I don't want to think about the pain no more. I don't, don't let me cry on um in the AM, they claim. So says no pain, no gain. Man, man. Lydia, good morning. Says Lydia says good morning. Money bag. So no doubt. I call him money bag because um Man, when you make four hundred thousand in in ten months, um, I don't know what else I'm supposed to call you. What what else am I supposed to call you? Who who are you at that point? But when he was talking about the pain, Mister Lee, I was thinking about how in high school, right? Um, I I figured out at high school. Well, my, my high school experience wasn't the normal high school experience. And I was in class and I was like, you know what? When I get out of school today, I'm going to go get a job. And I'm going to walk down the street and I'm going to stop at every single business and fill out an application until I get to the end of the street, which was about four, four miles maybe from my high school. I got maybe about two miles in and I had a job on the spot. But it was painful walking down that street. First of all, there's people playing. They getting out of school. They about to go home. They about to, you know, be in the streets joking and playing. I'm filling out job application. And that drive, that hunger is what made me understand that year that I was searching for my first deployment, what it was going to take. Because I said, I'm not going home. I'm going to go down this street. I'm going to walk down one side of the street. I'm going to stop at every single business. And then if I don't get anything and I get down to the, the end of the street, I'm going to come back the other way and I'm going to hit every single business until I get home. I'm getting a job today. You know what I'm thinking about? What's that? Oh, What's that? I think about that first day freshman year of track practice. Oh, my God. Is the general on here? First day. Freshman year of track practice. The general know what track practice is about. Track is a different is a track is a different type of working out. I lasted seven days in the five. I don't, 
um, your wind. Yeah, yeah. You know, your endurance, but you also have to strength train. Yeah. The day after you get out that bed and all them cramps start happening. Oh, you know, my God. Cramps some place you didn't know you could cramp. You slipping in a uh, cardboard uh, cut. Oh, my goodness. I literally had cramps everywhere. And that's what type of pain you have to go through in order to be able to endure the race. Mm -hmm. You have to feel that pain so that you can endure the race. Man, man, man. Trey said wrestling is the pain. I oh, ran man. track two. Wrestling, wrestling two. Oh, my God. I never did high school wrestling because I knew from middle school that I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I saw them, and it, it just looks like the story is pain and perseverance. It is. It is. It well, is. I've seen them doing push-ups with handstands. Handstand push-ups. What does that mean? So basically, you do a handstand against the wall. Uh-huh. And then you do push-ups, push yourself up. Have the wall and hold you up. Hold you up. And then you do push-ups. Yeah. What? Yeah, it was real. I, when I seen that, I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Wow. I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna go out for basketball. <laughs> <laughs> You know, as they say, I'm 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 super straight. <laughs> keep keep I'm working out the super <laughs> Jennifer says, keep those out of your ear who know nothing about this industry. No doubt, Jennifer, they can be discouraging and motivate you to quit. It's like going to a going to a dentist and saying you got a a, a foot problem. They don't know. Can't even fathom. They didn't go to 10 years. They went to 10 years at dental school. They didn't go to 10 years <laughs> of podiatry school. Come on, man. Two separate things. Y'all, I'm glad you all are with me. I'm glad everybody gets it. Jennifer, you're 1,000% right. Trey says the story is pain and perseverance. It really is. And, and you can't necessarily explain it. You can't teach it to people. You can't tell it. They just have to feel it. So I'm 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 happy for everybody that feels it and understands and is going through the journey. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, if you keep going, you're gonna hit your goal. Out Central Texas in the When was that, Miss Lee? Yesterday. Yesterday? Y'all, adjusters, it's it's a lot of weather events going on that may not necessarily be nationally broadcasted, right? So if you're in the network and you are in the weather channel, the weather circle rather, keep an eye on the weather circle, turn into a mini meteorologist because there's so many weather events. There was hail last night or yesterday rather. Um, these things lead to deployments and it might not be a hugely broadcast deployment, you're going to have to call the firms and ask them, do they need any help? And be incessant about doing it. Be relentless. Don't stop doing it. Don't get discouraged in doing it. This is the way every adjuster has got on. So, um, wow, I, I need to go look at that report. Y'all, I got some claims to get into. We got some work going in today. And it looks like some people need to get on the phone if we had hell like that. If we had hell like that. I'm talking about like it snow. Yeah. It's it's some work going out. But I think um when you get into your mind and you start listening to people that really don't know what they're doing, you get discouraged. And that's exactly what happened to me my first year trying to get into this. So don't give up, y'all. I will holler at everybody later in the morning. Tomorrow I'll be on at 7 a.m. We have Darius Cook joining us at 7.30 a.m. for Adjust Your Mindset because tomorrow is Friday. We adjust our mindset. A claim. A claim. Chris, I'll see you later. GR Hova, I'll see you later. Y'all, we'll see you tomorrow. I'll have some updates, hopefully, on that claim tomorrow. And we'll talk to Darius and see what he has going on. We're almost, we're almost at April. We're almost at April. A claim. We're almost there. See you later, Miss J. Have a great day. Have a great day, Chris. I'm perfectly imperfect. Have a great day.
if you're trying to get in touch with me, uh, reach out to me in the network, DM me. Um, if you're, if you need some help, if you're trying to get some information about this insurance adjusting industry and you want somebody that's actually doing it, pointing you in the right way, not somebody that is gatekeeping, somebody that's trying to throw a rock and hide their hand. That's not me. If you need some help and you're really serious about it, but look, I want you to know that I'm really serious. This industry changed my life. So I, I believe in it. And, um, if you're really for real about it, I'll show you which way to go. But just be ready for the path because I'm not joking. When I show you something, I'm really, I'm for real with it. Make sure you are as serious. If you are, if you for real, go to 100kadjuster.com. Get my book, Adjust Your Way to 100K. Go listen to my podcast, Adjust Your Way to 100K, available on all podcast platforms. If you're trying to get some training and get ready for what's to come this hurricane season, because they're saying that we're going to have an overproductive season. This is a La Nina year. There's a lot of speculation. We'll talk about it tomorrow with Darius on Adjust Your Mindset. But if you're trying to get training, go to go to insuranceadjusternow.com. Set up your spot for your training so you can be ready to work these claims and get this money. Like you say, you want to. If you're serious. Hey, Clay, everybody not serious, and I understand. But if you're serious. Go to Insurance Adjuster now. If you're really wanting a network, if you're serious about your networking, I'll see you in the network. Go to jointheian.com. I'll let y'all later. Have a great day. See, Jennifer, you 1,000% right. See, Des. See, General. See, Contract Killer. Have a great day. See, Tashina. GR, I'll holler at you later. Have a great day. I'm perfectly imperfect. I love it. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. See you later, Instagram. See you later, YouTube, Facebook, X. Holla at y'all later. Have a great day.